Hey class, it's Bill continuing the video on drawing EERs. We got all the way up to the point where we looked at our PTSA tables. We paid attention to the primary keys, foreign keys, and we even put a little icons we remembered, which were the linking tables, because those will, will create sort of in a special way. So we understand the relationships, the tables, primary keys, foreign keys. We understand the things we need to do to construct an EER. So now let's uh, go back to SQL, or MySQL, and then let's continue our idea. So let me go back here. Uh, to place a table, uh, you just click, oops, I'm going to delete this guy. To place a table, you click the little icon that looks like a table. Imagine that. Click that. Click here. Let's start with member because that's a pretty significant table. You double click and then remember, this is going to happen quite often, you don't have the UI that you need. It's right down here. You want it out of the way. Uh, there is a way to do that and I wish I could remember um, no, that's not the what I wanted, so hold on. So we won't worry about that. The thing that we need, though, is going to be revealed if we just bring this up a little bit, and then we'll be fine. There is some way to bring this down, and I don't remember what it is. I'll see if I can figure it out. Anyway, so now we get to name the table. So I'm going to put in here member, right, the name of the table. Next is I'm going to hit Enter, and then I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to start putting in columns. So if I double-click, I can then say I'm going to put in the member ID. Okay, you can then choose its data type, which makes sense, and you can see a variety of other options. If you want to know what anyone is, hover over the name, like you see here that AI is auto-incremental. So if that needs to be an auto-increment field, just click that. And by default, the first one it's going to mark as the primary key. That makes sense, right? You don't, and you can change that later, but that's what we do. Um, let's just for now uh, leave in just the keys. Let's not get too much into the other details. Let's just put in the keys. So I'm going to come in here. If you get an extra column that you didn't want, you can right-click it and say uh, Delete Selected. So let's just leave that, and then let's close this tab so we see that's our member table and it has a primary key. Let's just focus right now on primary and foreign keys. Let's not fuss with the rest. It's probably easier to understand if we just do it here. So that's our first kind of independent table. Now we have several others that we talked about. One is committee, so let's create another table somewhere. Double click it. Its name is going to be committee. And then again, we've got to raise this thing because we can't see it at this, this resolution and this size. And I'm going to have the committee ID. This turns out to be another auto increment field. And that's all I'm going to put in for right now. That's perfectly fine. So I'm just going to close that. There we go. So a committee has a committee table is established. And now the interesting part here now is that remember on our diagram, we had a linking table called committee member. So to create a linking table, we're not going to do the work ourselves. We're going to let MySQL do this work for us. So this is kind of cool. I'm going to leave some space between the two for the magic. Now, one of the tools that you're going to see on your palette is a one-to-many. They call it N to M. But this represents a many-to-many -many relationship, which we have already figured out based on the other discussion that we're going to need. That's why we made a linking table. So rather than us doing it, we're going to click on that tool. Now, Pay attention carefully down to the lower left in the status bar. It says, select the first table to be joined. There are times when the order matters, so pay attention to the prompt there. So I'm going to click on the first one and click on the second one. The order doesn't matter in this particular case. And it's going to create our linking table for us. It's going to bring over the names and the data types from those keys, which is very convenient. And why I like for it to do this work for us. Now, it doesn't name things the, may, the way we like, so we can double click that, and then we can again bring up our divider, and instead of member has committee, I'm going to change the name, and so I'm going to come over here, and uh, let's see, does this work? Uh, here we go. Let's go backspace here. I think committee member might make more sense, so let's call it committee member. And then uh, I'm going to just change the name of the keys, it won't change the relationship in terms of the tables, but it just changes the name here. And notice automatically it has made them both primary keys and we know they're foreign keys because they're in a linking table. So now if we close this and go back and look, we have the start of our linking, we have our linking table established with its basic keys. Now again, we're going to flesh out a little more stuff later. There's some other data that we want in here, but that's a start. Let's do the same thing with dues. All right, so let's make a dues table real quick, and I'm going to call that dues, 
and bring up the divider and again just put in some key information here so in this case it's dues year uh, we're going to make this a tiny int 4 and this is not going to be auto increment this is going to be primary key and not nil yes that's true so that's cool and I'm going to close that and now we have our basic dues table as well now we know from our diagram that we are needing to have a linking table here as well right for dues we have member dues which links member to dues that makes sense so again come down here choose the many to many click on the first table click on the second table and now we have our dues member member dues now we're going to clean this up a little bit I'm gonna call it um, member oops I think I did the wrong thing here I put it on the wrong uh, the wrong table entirely so let's go back and fix that it doesn't go to committee member it goes to member I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna just delete uh, let me delete the right thing here yeah okay so I'm going to make sure I, I uh, link these to the right tables. So many to many dues to member. That makes more sense. Okay, there we go. All right. So now I'm going to double click this guy and I'm going to say this is member dues. So one of the things that we'll see here, I'll again bring up the splitter. Okay, we decided that we wanted to have our own primary key here. We didn't want to use the linking one for the reasons that we discussed before. We like to have a number here because we're going to refer to it in another table as a foreign key and it's just easier than carrying around the two. So we actually want to have our own thing here. We're going to have our member dues ID and I'm going to make that an auto increment and it's auto increment and this is going to be the primary key but these other guys are not going to be the primary key so I'm going to take that off I'm going to leave non null and then I'm going to drag this guy up to the top and I'm going to capitalize the way I like so what I've done here is I've just changed around I made my own primary key and took off the other ones because they need to be foreign keys but not primary keys based on our discussion hopefully you can see that when you look at the table now that looks more like the model that we had in mind now let me arrange these a little bit I want to put member kind of center to the discussion because it's kind of important all right so right now again we're just putting in foreign keys we're letting uh, MySQL help make the relationships and even make the linking table so that's pretty cool uh, now dues payment is a little bit different it's not a linking table it's kind of its own thing so we're going to start it and this is going to be dues payment and it's going to have a column name right and we're going to put the relationship in a second but um, one of the things we know we're going to need here is a dues uh, payment date which is going to be a date field right and that's going to be part of our primary key we decided already before so let's now close that now the thing that we need to do here is we need to add the relationship but this is not a many-to-many -many relationship between this table and member dues it's really a one-to-many relationship one member dues line can have many payments associated with it so we need to do in this case a one-to-many so I'm gonna click the one-to-many don't worry about whether it's the dotted identifying or not we'll get that clear later so we're gonna choose a one-to-many now pay attention to the status bar select the table to receive the foreign key that has to be on the many side so I'm gonna click that and then it says now click the referenced table and I'm gonna click that and notice now it has brought over the uh, the other field and in fact we're gonna go look at it here in the in the uh, column editor and we have now the dues payment date and then I'm gonna take away the naming right but it's pretty much the same so now both of them are primary keys and we know that one of them is a foreign key as well which is what we wanted right it's it's the the thing we wanted and then I think just for ordering I'm gonna put that first so it's it's top of the list so now you see here we have dual primary keys one of which is a foreign key to help us with our one-to-many relationship last but not least we need to put in the office offices table so I'm gonna put that here and I'm gonna call that offices and flesh that out just a tiny bit office right and then it's going to have an office ID that's gonna be an int it's gonna be an auto increment that's its primary key that's enough okay and now 
I, I need to have one other table that represents the members that hold that office. So that's going to be a linking table and again a many-to-many -many relationship. So again I let MySQL do the work. Many-to-many, -many, click on one, click on the second one, and now we have office has member. I'm going to click on that one, again work on the naming, I'm going to call it uh, member office and I have the primary key, the the keys all set up already the linking table made, did the uh, it did the magic on the linking table primary keys foreign keys etc everything is done for us just like that all right so now we have all of the tables and all of the relationships that are set up. We still need to maybe flesh out some of the column names, that's true, but that's easy enough to do because we've got the bones here. So now basically um, we just need to add to the tables the very basic stuff about the other fields. So for instance in this one we have an officer uh, position and that is varchar45, that's fine, it has to be non-null, sure. All right. And again, if you ever get extra columns, right-click them, and then you can delete them from there. So I'm going to close that. And again, if you get this, uh, if you don't have enough room, you can make the thing bigger, and then it'll show, it'll show all of your, uh, all of your stuff. So now we're just going to do that with each of the remaining tables. We're just going to go in and add the other things that we need. So let me go do that for us real quick. Do one example of that in committee member. I need to add another field for the date they joined. So I just bring up the divider if you need to. Add date joined right here. I'm going to put a date field right there. I can close that table or that little uh, table uh, tab and there you go. Same thing with committee. Double click it. Raise the divider. Come in here. Double click. Committee name. Varchar 45. Sure. Why not? Don't care. Uh, not null. Sure. Close the little tab for the table. So that's all you have to do to add the rest of these things. So I will, uh, let's see, is there anything else that's missing? Uh, we need a payment, uh, payment amount here, so let me fill that in real quick for us. Okay, so now we have all the data set up for each of the columns, the data, the column name, the data type, etc. And then you can clean up anything else you need to do, like the naming. I noticed that a couple of these are not uh, not what I would like, so I'm going to just go double click each of those and then do my editing and then close that. So I think now everything is named the way we like it and now the only thing else I'd like to do just to make it a little bit uh, cleaner looking is I think I want to add some little layers so that I can show the different pieces that are going on here. Layers are really easy. You just click this little layer tool and you go and you draw around the things that you want to to uh, sort of group together visually. And now I can double click that and I can give the layer a name, like this is the committee's stuff. You can also click the color swatch. You can pick another color like, uh, oh gosh, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe I'd like them to be purple or blue or whatever. And then you can click, uh, make it lighter by clicking on the slider here because I don't think dark colors make any sense here. There you go. And then you close that. So now you have a layer showing all of the committee stuff and I can do similarly for the others. I'm going to click this one. I'm going to draw around the dues and I'm going to make that say dues and make this, let's say, the color of money. All right, again, lighten that up a little bit. Yeah, it doesn't look very green. It looks like something else, so yeah, that's fine. Okay, kind of minty green. That'll do. And close that, and then I can do the same for committees, or for offices, rather. Okay, so now I have all of the layers. That kind of is a nice representation and kind of groups things together visually, so I think that's pretty darn good. You can arrange them if you want to. Uh, it's a little bit hard to make the lines go straight sometimes. You might be able to zoom in and make that happen. You can use the control and then the plus on the number pad if you want to zoom in, or control minus on the number pad to zoom out. You might be able to make your line straight, but in reality it's pretty hard, so you know, kind of you just have to get over it. Sorry. Now the other thing to do here is we wanted to uh, show how to make an index because you're going to need that. So we said for instance maybe on the members maybe we're going to look them up by phone a lot so maybe we want to add an index by phone. So uh, let's double click that guy and then bring up the slider and then you'll notice over here you have a tab called indexes and you can click on that and right now you only have the primary key index which is automatically created. But I'm going to create an index named member phone and I get to choose what type I'm doing and it's not obviously primary it's just a regular index. Does it have to be unique? Eh, no maybe not. I'm just gonna call it index. And that way 
uh, I have another index created and if you now click this little expander now you can see the indices that are created for that now the rest of these guys don't really have an interesting one uh, they'll have an index for primary and foreign keys but they're not unusual so we're probably going going to uh, just leave those be all right oh now I want to I want to collapse it and it doesn't let me there we go okay so uh, so that's a way to create the index and also to uh, to show the index if you want to show it on the diagram so that brings us to the end of creating the EERs don't forget that at intervals you should save it every time you get to an interesting point make sure you save that and then that's the file you're going to submit is that MWB remember that as was astutely asked in class we are actually creating it feels like we're doing more than just drawing here we're actually giving some structure some some uh, you know table definition definitions. We're actually creating behind the scenes a schema here too. We won't use that fact for a while, but that's what we're really doing. So cool stuff. And uh, the other option that I showed in class is if you want to take off the grid lines, you can say view and toggle grid. Uh, if you need to take a screenshot of that for any reason, sometimes it's nice to get rid of the grid lines. So that's what you need to do. Otherwise, I think that gives you a pretty good uh, sense of how to create an EER. Again, it's easiest if you create the basic, most independent tables, add only the primary keys, then let the uh, let SQL do the work, MySQL do the work of creating the linking tables for you and creating the foreign keys and things like that for you it's just easier I think to do that now there is another option if you have done if you actually have created all of the fields yourself there is another option I want to tell you about and that's this last one that says place a relationship using existing columns so you can do that and it'll walk you through those steps but I find it easiest for it to just do it because it brings over names it brings over data types it creates the key the the relationship lines it kind of does all the work and it's just easier to me to, to go about it this way so that's your video on how to create these things I hope that's useful and you'll need to put that in use in your next project which will ask you to design a database based not on artifacts but on some descriptions that I give you which will I think uh, make it a little bit easier to start from that point. So thanks for watching this video and good luck and let me know if you have other questions.